Our live match from the Scottish Premier League tonight features the two teams who dominated the scene in the early 80s but have fallen on difficult times since. It's Dundee United against Aberdeen. Hello there, Dundee United got their first win of the season last week, but it wasn't enough to lift them off the bottom of the table. They could start to climb tonight, though a win over Aberdeen would see them leap to sixth spot. Charlie Nicholas, what kind of match can we expect tonight? I think we'll get a very exciting match. I think these two teams always go for it. They like to attack both of them. But United being at home and under new manager, I think we'll flood the midfield. But I think we're going to see a, a pacey game. Not a lot of time in the ball, Jim. But for me, I think Dundee United could be dominant in the midfield area. Why have times been tough for United and the Dons of late, Charlie? I think a lot of it is self-belief. You've got to start getting in the habit of winning again. None of the teams have done that. But I think Sturrock is creating something here at United to get them back. OK. Well, two games have already been played this afternoon. Hearts 1, St Johnson 1. Alan Preston opening the scoring for St Johnson with Lee Makel equalising. And Rangers 1, Dundee 0. George Alberts getting the winner 11 minutes from time. And that means Rangers are back at the top of the table, two points clear of Kilmarnock. Then comes Celtic, Hearts, St Johnson, Aberdeen, Motherwell, Dunfermline, Dundee and Dundee United. But Charlie, a United win in our live game right now and they go to sixth position. That's a, it's a big night for them. Well, it's a big night, but Aberdeen have got to start playing. We've seen them last weekend, they were ever so disappointed at home. They're going to play Jess in behind Winters and who will be a bit happier that Mike Neal's going to return. He prefers to play with a target man. But for me tonight, it's about midfield and I think Dundee United look the stronger team in that department tonight. Do you rate Winters? Yes, I like his pace. I think he's uh, clever enough to work off a target man. The problem being, Jim, is that when things ain't going well for him, there's a kind of acceptance. I think he's got to drive himself a bit more to create things. He can't just always rely on his pace. He's got to do a little bit more. And I think Billy Dodds will be really up for this game tonight. He could be the big match winner tonight. Is there genuine passion, Charlie, when the new firm, as they're called, when they meet? Well, of course there is. These two teams have got great respect for each other. But don't forget, when they go either... Pataudry or Tanadice, they always go for the, the result, they go for three points. Last season we've seen heavy defeat for Aberdeen. Tonight they'll be wo all about pride, but they'll want to play well tonight also Aberdeen. But for me United wouldn't want it. OK Charlie, so let's now concentrate on Dundee United against Aberdeen with our match commentators at Tanadice, John Robertson and first Ian Crocker. Thanks Jim, well they're two of Scotland's biggest clubs but they're two of Scotland's biggest underachievers as well. Dundee United are bottom of the Scottish Premier League, but it is a tight table, and victory today would shoot them up to sixth above Aberdeen, amongst others. The Dons have gone six league games without a win. Dundee United are without suspended Shell Olifson after his red card at St Johnston last week. Northern Ireland international Ian Jenkins tweaked a hamstring in training yesterday. Siggy Jonsson and Tommy Malls are also out. Youngster Jim Patterson is back in the team. And Joe Miller starts for the first time in seven games. He's a former Aberdeen man. Likewise, Billy Dodds, of course, who's only just left the Todrick. Well, Paul Sturrock will have the ever-reliable Morris Marpus here at the back to keep things together. But the key area for me today is Joe Miller and Darren Patterson going down the outside to supply the ammo for McSwiggin and last week's hat-trick hero Billy Dodds up front. Well, Aberdeen are without defender John Ingalls, who was injured against Kilmarnock last week. Gary Smith and Russell Anderson return to the starting lineup. Out go Andy Dow and Davey Rowson. Mike Newell is also back in the side, and he partners Robbie Winters, who faces his former club, of course, having only just left Tannadice. Well, Aberdeen, very disappointing last week. The usual four at the back. But here's the big change there. Ian Jess is going to play off the front two, and I'm sure with the, the absolute pace of Winters and the strength of Newell up front, Aberdeen will be a far different prospect this week. Well, it's been a sluggish start to the season for these two teams. They've both got to get going, and soon. Dundee United, although bottom, reckon they might be a little bit more confident tonight after Billy Dodds' hat-trick at St Johnston secured their first win of the campaign. Aberdeen, in their change kit of white shirts, stuck in a bit of a rut. For the first time in seven years, they won their first two matches of the season. But not much to shout about since for the Dons. They have a chance to erase the memory of a rather pathetic performance a week ago tonight against Kilmarnock. 
It's a derby match which always gives this game extra edge. Recent history favours Dundee United, they've only lost one of their last ten meetings with Aberdeen. As well as a 5-0 thrashing here last season, which ultimately cost Roy Aitken his job. Aberdeen were also knocked out of the Scottish Cup and the League Cup by Dundee United, so they've got to be fired up for this one. Billy Dodds faces his former club then, he'll always be a hero with the Aberdeen fans, his goals helped stave off the threat of relegation three years ago, but he couldn't have asked for a much better start to his Dundee United career with a hat-trick on his full debut last week. Dodds came here as part of a deal that saw Robbie Winters go the other way, this talented 23-year-old makes a quick return to Tannadice and might be a tad pleased were he to open his Aberdeen account here. The Dons are certainly glad he's on their side, having scored four goals against them last season. Every team needs experience, of course. Veteran Morris Malpass is 36, but still going very, very strong. He's already collected four Man of the Match awards this season, and he'll be involved with the Scottish under-21s in the coming week. All in all, a good man to have around. If the old man Malpass has been done the United's best performer so far this season, Jim Layton is still doing the business for the Dons. At the age of 40, Layton is just four games short of 600 league appearances. And the referee for this encounter is Mike McCurry, who is in charge of Dundee United's opening game of the season at Kilmarnock, when they had two goals rather controversially disallowed. Both these teams aiming to really kickstart their season, and it's Aberdeen in their change kit, with white shirts and black shorts, who will start this derby encounter. Scottish Premier League table is so tight that Dundee United, if they continue their fine recent record against Aberdeen, will move above them in the table and right up into sixth place. Craig Hignett with the immediate up and under, which is dealt with by Magnus Skoldmark. Dodds. Here's Derek White, who's without John Ingalls alongside him today because Ingalls picked up a hamstring injury in our live game last week against Kilmarnock. Jim Patterson. It was a rather hurried ball from the youngster, though. Jim Patterson, who is in the Scottish under-21 squad to face Estonia on Friday and then Belgium the week after. Newell's flick on. Two teams who had such successful times in the 80s, but it's really not going well for either of them at the moment, is it, John? No, it certainly is not. And uh, we saw also last week of disappointing Aberdeen were, but hopefully they've got an ear bashing this week from the manager and they'll come out full of pride and passion this week. Well, that was a real up and under. Which Dijkstra came and collected. Now Dodds is on the chase. One thing's for sure, Derek White will know all about him. Everything there is to know. The former Middlesbrough man who also spent a good few years with Celtic. Darren Patterson, who joined from Luton in the summer, Northern Ireland International, finds his namesake Jim, who's fouled by Gary Smith. Jim Patterson looks very lively in early moments, a little nutmeg there. No doubt a foul from Gary Smith, but it's promising for Dundee United. It's a free kick. And it's going to be swung in by the former... Aberdeen man Miller, but not troubling his old teammate there too much. Bobby Winters getting booed rather predictably by the 
Dundee United fans. But he was really glad when he saw the fixture list and uh, noticed that he had to come back here so soon. Wipes up and under, Newell on the chase, but that's going to carry to Dykstra. Down Patterson. That'll be offside. Not much doubt about that one, as looks we're going to straight. Jess was fouled by Dodds. Hignett now. White. Skullmark. And the United crashed Aberdeen here 5-0 last season in one of the league games. And 4 0 the season before, they'd certainly settled for something similar tonight. Away by White. It's Jim Patterson with the throw. Before the throw can be taken, though, the referee was just having a quick word with Miller. Yeah, I think he caught taking it with a late tackle there. The referee would just take it easy. Darren Patterson's lob, and that'll be an Aberdeen free kick. But he's busy already. It's good defending from Derek White there. I don't really see much in that. Billy Dodds is, is leading into him. It's a very soft free kick. Aberdeen started the season so well with victories on the opening day at Dundee and then they beat Celtic in a thrilling match live on Sky. But it really hasn't gone right for them since culminating in last week's rather poor showing against Kilmarnock. Paul Sturrock, a legend as a player here, now in charge of Dundee United after his move from St Johnston last month. And Tony McLean departed. It's a club that is so, so close to his heart. And a mistake by Zetterland, rough side against Newell. Flag is up. A real chance here, I think, taking it just delayed the ball too long. He just took a touch too many, and Mike Newell just straight offside. But that was a good chance there, Pignett had just released the ball a fraction earlier. His dodge couldn't quite keep hold of it. Alex Miller in charge of Aberdeen, formerly number two to Gordon Strachan at Coventry as Craig Brown's number two of course at international level Jim Patterson offside again Dundee United have drawn their three league games here this season 0-0 with Hearts and Rangers and 1-1 with Dunfermline they've got to start getting some home wins Aberdeen Likewise, we'll settle for some wins anywhere at the moment. Perry. Drops for Jess. And Dykstra will come out. Winters was thinking about trying to nip in. But the giant keeper was always going to claim that. He's a brave man. You see, you see Dykstra coming out full pelt. He's not somebody you really want to run into. Jim Patterson, Darren's return wasn't uh, the best, I think we could safely say. Free kick taken in the wrong place by Dundee United, so they will be hauled all the way back. Uh, very untidy challenge here from Russell Anderson. Jim Patterson done well, he's had a good start to the match. Anderson just a little bit late. Yeah. A tad high as well, didn't he? <laughs> Came on as a sub last week, Russell Anderson. And he has started seven out of Aberdeen's 11 games this season though. It's the youngster Jim Patterson then.
Newell. Malpass lets it drop over him. This was closing him down all the time. Malpass seemed to be caught in two minds a little bit. White. Hignett. Nice work by Hignett, finds Gillis. He gets the cross in, scold mark. Showed too much of that to Hignett. And Dykstra will pluck it out of the air. But for a while then it looked promising. For a good play, yes, from Craig Hignett there. He gets in there. He started the match very, very well indeed. He's looking very sharp. And uh, we have a reputation like Craig Hignett after last week's disappointing performance. It's nice to see him come out and try and put it right. Five years since Aberdeen actually managed to win here. They would quite like to put that right tonight. Only lying in sixth place. But that is exactly the position Dundee United will be in if they win here. The city of discovery, Dundee, propping up the Scottish Premier League at the moment. And Gary Smith slid across before Jim Patterson could really do much with it. It's a fine tackle from Gary Smith here, beautiful time, look at that, comes in and just knocks it out before Jim Patterson can get to the danger byline there. Excellent timing. And Swigan making a mess of the throw, so it suddenly goes Aberdeen's way. Smith will take it. Return to the club after a year in French football. Anderson. Here's Mike Newell. Another throw for Gary Smith. Terry. Aim towards Newell, but was away by Darren Patterson. Zetterlin has given that away to Gillis, who did know where he was going. Here's Smith, and it's opening up a little bit for Aberdeen down this side, and that's a decent cross from Smith. And Winters went in with Skoldmark, and it's a corner. Well, that's superb Winter passing play from Aberdeen there. Ian Jess slipping Smith through. And that's a magnificent ball, but it's an equally magnificent defensive header. Winters would love to score his first Aberdeen goal here. Of that, there is no doubt. Jesse's corner, and Dykstra takes it off the top of right head, I think, then. Well, Big Seab's a cult hero at United, and this is his strong point. He's came over Boris and took it very, very well indeed. Played for Queen's Park Rangers in England, but uh, he was in Scotland before he went down south to London at Motherwell. Pasquale now, the Frenchman. Dodds his header, no problem for Tim Layton, 40 years young. Yeah, it's not a bad little ball in here. Billy Dodds gets away from his markers and is whipped in. He just gets in front. It's a good header, but you'd expect Tim Layton to take that very easily like he did. Squall's throw. It's a nice ball from McSwigan and now Jim Patterson's cross. Anderson was just shoved then by Lars Zetterland. That was good play again, but there's Russell Anderson getting in. Another soft foul. But the Aberdeen man not getting the ball. The referee was quite right to give the free kick to the Dons. rising above Mike Newell and he'll have to do so again here Newell won that though, here's Winters Phil Winters, he's not got much support around him at the moment and it's actually going to be a throw in to Dundee United That's a good little player from Robbie he weaved his way in but as you said Ian 
not a lot of support there to help him. In the end, crowded out by the United defence. Billy Dodds. White. That's a peach of a pass to Mike Neal. Outstanding distribution from White. And not a bad cross, which Winters met. And it has gone over for the goal kick, but he's certainly seeing plenty of the ball early on. Well, this is a magnificent ball from Derek White. A great run from Neal. And this is a real chance. Neal puts a superb ball in there. Winters gets in front. I'll tell you what, there could have been suggestions of a penalty there. He was getting held down. But in the end, it was still a good header, and he put it over the bar. The, uh, the United defenders will know all about his strengths. I suppose the same could be said as well for Billy Dodds. Skoldmark. Here's Lars Zetterman, and it's opened up a little bit for him. Jim Patterson. Now the flag is up. There's a poor way to get the ball side. There's ever a good way, I suppose. Well, it's good movement here again, and oh, I don't think that's offside. I'd have to say when the ball was played, but Jim Patterson was definitely onside. It was a poor decision from the linesman, but he's human like everybody else, and it's just a, a little mistake. But they're human. <laughs> of course they are. Zetterlund's header. And by Hignett for Jess. Away by Zetterlund. Perry now finding Smith. Zetterlund. Dodds. Neatly helps it on towards Jim Patterson. It's come back to Billy Dodds. Anderson clears. Not very far, it must be said, but he trying to help it on a bit. By Zetterland. Easton. Pasquale to Craig Easton. Pasquale. And Swiggin. Pignet. Both sides are giving it away at the moment and that will be a free kick for the foul by Hignett and Dodds yeah, Craig Hignett sliding late I think he just catches Billy he does well to get away uh, Billy drawing the free kick there Aberdeen finished sixth last season Dundee United just below them in seven much much better expected from these two teams Mal passes free kick, whipped all the way through. And the nearest man to it was the former Aberdeen player Joe Miller. I'm sure Joe would love to have got an end of that one. It wasn't a bad ball for Morris. I'll tell you, he wasn't too far away from getting a touch on it. Jamie Buckin will eventually take the throne. The ball finally returned. Hignett. Hignett. Can't seem to get anywhere at the moment. Zetterlund. It was nice work by Miller. He finds Dodds. Only two former Aberdeen men combining, and again, back he goes to Miller, and Hignett, that's a free kick given there, right on the edge of the area. Well, this could be a real chance for Dundee United, Craig Hignett sliding in there, I don't know if there's any contact made, Joe Miller has a swing at the shot, it's hard to see from that angle, but the referee was, yeah, perfectly correct there, Mike McCurry, a really good decision, and this is a chance for United. Zetterlund standing near it, Jim Layton sorting out his wall. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Gary McSwiggan also there. Well, it's a great opportunity now for Dundee United. And it's McSwiggan, and it cannon back off the wall. Jim Patterson in towards Zetterland, who returns the compliment. Patterson's cross, Dodds. And Pasquale's attempt to force it through the crowd failed as well. Winters, that was a decent header. Here's Gillis. Newell is just getting to his feet inside his own half, so he wouldn't have been an option to aim for up front. Winters flick on for Gillis. And was it a foul by Marpas? Yes. I don't think there's any doubt about that one. Gillis like Dodge earlier on, just drawing the foul there. It's good first touch. As Malfos comes in, he just flicks it past him. And yet again, the referee. Perfect level. So, Jess to stand over this. But before it can be taken, Mike Neal's going to need a little bit of treatment. He actually fell initially inside his uh, own half. And although he did stagger to his feet, he appears to have a bit of a problem. He also has a wet sock now. Well, gone are the days of the old magic sponge in now. It's uh, <laughs> the magic Lucas bottle. And I'm sure he'll be all right. And right back in the thick of the action shortly. Now, uh, Robbie Winters, what about this penalty shot of yours, John? Well, I just can't help thinking here. If Winters, you see that the Dundee United defender's arms are all over him. And that, put, that definitely put him off the header. And I just feel if that had happened anywhere else in the pitch. In by Jess. He might have got a penalty. Cleared by Skolmark. Gary Smith. Now pass with the up and under. Watched very, very carefully. Billy Dodds. Here's Easton. Darren Patterson. Morris Malpass. Zetterland. Swiggins touched to Dodds. Leighton's kick out went straight to Zetterland, but then he nodded it straight back to Gary Smith. And neither side can string any, anything approaching a move together at the moment. See what I mean? Here's Anderson. Bucking up towards Winters. Malpass alert to the threat. How many balls are being given away here? There's a chance now. It's Hignett who's steaming away. Craig Hignett! Oh, and Dykstra, to his credit, did enough to foil Hignett and to divert it behind for the corner. Well, that's magnificent goalkeeping from Big Steve there. He's done everything right. It's a tremendous break from Craig Hignett. Right through the heart of the Dunyan 8 defence. But Dykstra stays tall and gets down to stop the shot. Dykstra, the hero. He's got to watch this corner come in from Jess. Malpass clears. And there could be a Dundee United break on here. It's Billy Dodds. Magnificently charged down by White. And Dykstra quickly out again. Yes, big seed there. Absolutely magnificent. It's a great run from Hignett. He's probably been the most impressive player in the opening 20 minutes. But Dykstra does everything ever so well to keep the scoreline blank. Dundee United edging ahead as far as attempts at goal are concerned. Likewise, with the on-target ones, Aberdeen yet to manage an effort on target. Mike Neal's OK, though, after that knock. Man who won the championship in England with Blackburn Rovers and formed a very useful partnership with Alan Shearer. Alex Miller. <laughs> plenty to shout about already. No goals, though, in this game. 
Dodds. McSwiggan. Oh, it's in. Gary McSwiggan planted it firmly in the corner. Leighton might have seen it a little late, or maybe he didn't expect the instant shot. Well, this is a tremendous finish for me. It's beautifully rolled in here by Billy Dodds. And Gary McSwiggan just plants it in the corner, nice as you like. And although Dodds has been getting the plaudits for his goals, McSwiggan's been in good form as well. And that's a magnificent finish. Late then, absolutely no chance as it slips in to his bottom right hand corner. A fantastic finish from Gary McSwiggan, his fourth of the season. And Dundee United 1 0 up. Jim Layton is beaten. He picked a clean sheet in the first two league, uh, first two games of the season, but none in eight matches since. Make that nine. Aaron McSwigan has been talking about a new contract with Dundee United. His current one expires tomorrow. Here they go again. And Zetterlund, a timely interception from Russell Anderson. Gillis was crowded out. Hignett's tackle, but it only delays Dundee United temporarily. Easton, Zetterlund, Skoldmark. Miller, Pasquale, Dundee United looking really confident now. After their first win of the season at St Johnston last week. It's Aberdeen's free kick though. Pasquale is penalised. And it's uh, White, I think, is down. So, more problems for Mr Miller. He's even hiding from us. No, I don't think Alan Miller will be too happy. Just when it seemed to say we're getting on top, create a lovely chance there with Craig Hignett. And the Robbie Winters header, they're hit with a classic sucker punch, and United have got their noses in front. Gary McSwiggan, with an excellently executed effort as well. Bang into the corner. Well, more goals at that, I'm sure his, his contract situation will be sorted out sooner rather than later. This is how the injury happened. It's actually Easton. And Gillis. He's okay now though, if uh, looking a little groggy. Newell's flick on, just dropped the wrong side of Robbie Winters. Away by Skoldmark. Zetterlund is going to meet that. Russell Anderson. Some of the distribution tonight uh, hasn't exactly been a uh, spot on, I think we could say. Oh, well, it's uh, a bit of a derby game. It's a wee bit more frantic than normal, but uh, yeah, with the quality that's on the pitch, some of the passing has uh, not been the best. Chester down by Newell. Easton nipped in. Aberdeen's throw. Smith to take it. it bounced away from Newell. Easton, who's only two goals last season, came against Aberdeen. I'm sure they took it personally. Flick on by Winters, finds Jess. Zetterlund no mops up and now Skoldmark straight through the middle. Jim Patterson. And another fine tackle from Gary Smith. It's a very good contest that one just now because Patterson's been very impressive in the opening 25-26 minutes. 
But Gary Smith had a couple of good tackles on the youngster. And it's shaping up to be a bit of a battle. Some contest. Jim Patterson's cross. Helped on by Dodds. Away by Buckham, but only to Zetterlin. Hit his own man, Dodds. Comes back to Easton. Pasquale now to Miller. He was able to flick it back to the Frenchman. And here's Dodds. And superbly slipped through by Dodds. The flag is up, though. And it wouldn't have counted. Leighton, to his credit, didn't bother to look. He came out very quickly. Well, was a good play again. I'll be interested to see this because it looked awfully, awfully tight. And he's not, off, he's not offside. If you look at the far side there, the full back played Garmick swinging on, and that could have been really controversial if he managed to slip it past Jim Layton. But Jim Layton, to his credit, as you already said, Ian, saved the shot. Layton already beaten once by McSwiggan. It'll be a throw for Jim Patterson. Helping it on to McSwiggan. Formerly with Rangers and with Knox County. Gary McSwiggan. Fans of uh, Mike Club might well remember him. He's got a few goals for them. Malpass. Here is McSwiggan again. Pasquale, Easton, up to Dodds, Miller was to his right but he went to the left which might have seemed like a good idea after all, McSwiggan danced his way past the challenge and Dodds just wide against his former club. Well I'm sure Billy Dodds would have loved to see this one hit the back in it, it's great link up play again between the two strikers, McSwiggan this time setting up Dodds. It's a good effort. I'm sure he'd have seen a, a huge smile on Billy's face if that one had hit the back of the net. Well, he scored 47 times for Aberdeen in the league. Just over 130 games. A pretty impressive return. Including some vital goals when they survived the drop in 1995. For which Aberdeen fans will be eternally grateful. Although, who says fans are fickle? Some of them have been burning him today. Yeah, I find it incredible that they're booing Billy Dodds. Magnificent seven for Aberdeen. As you said, scored a lot of crucial goals. I'm sure Aberdeen fans will miss him. Here he is. A lovely touch back to McSwiggan. And it's going to go through for Miller. But he gets his cross all wrong. Yeah, that's a disappointing cross from Joe Miller. United are playing with confidence. Unbeaten under Paul Sturrock. This is the goal that separates the sides from Gary McSwiggan and he couldn't have got this any more in the corner, I don't think. No, it's a good touch from Dodds and I don't think it's the cleanest strike Gary's ever had. But it's in the back of the net and that's all that counts. It's a precious one for Dundee United. for his huge kick Patterson kept it in and then got the throw in as well off Smith Zetterlund to Dodds scored mark and again Darren Patterson Malpass, offside. Frustration for McSwiggan that time. The flag instantly up by that linesman who uh, has uh, had a couple of dodgy decisions in this game, it must be said so far. No, I wouldn't say much say dodgy, I'd say tight, Ian. Very tight decisions. Oh, tight, OK. And, uh, well. That one again, <laughs> I'd like to have seen, but uh, I don't know, it's, it's a difficult job these linesmen have to do. And they do get it wrong occasionally. 
Watkins pass back to Leighton. And the free kick will go the way of Jim Leighton, who was charged into by Billy Dodds. It was a close call, that one. Yeah, it was. Uh, Billy just obstructed him there. Certainly a free kick. Correct decision from Mike McCurry there. And Billy Dodds getting a little bit of an ear bashing, but uh, I don't think he can have too many complaints. I won't want too many more back passes like that, though. Yeah. I don't know, it could create a couple of goals that year. <laughs> Easton's up and under. Gillies back to Buchan, up to Newell, who turns neatly away from Skoldmark, but then quickly has Pasquale to contend with. Hignett. Yes. And Aberdeen still have it with Smith. Dykstra's going to come for that. I think we can be pretty sure. The only man up is McSwiggan, but it might just reach him. Buckin missed it. Miller. And the challenge from. Buchan. His father, Captain Aberdeen, and Manchester United, of course, Martin Buchan. Perry's missed kick. McSwiggan back to Dodds. It finally sets up Zetterland. It looked like no one was going to be able to get a shot in, but Zetterland finally did. Well, Lars Zetterland isn't shy to hit them. It was a bit of a miscue in fairness still, he was closed down well by Craig Hignett. And I'd like to see Craig Hignett go on the ball a bit more. He looks a lively start with him for Ian Jess. He's usually disappointing so far, and he's such a skillful player. If Aberdeen could get one of those two on the ball, then things might just be able to turn for them. Anderson. Magnus Skoldmark. Who's he going to drop for? Winters. To Newell. Newell puts it inside to Jess. Tackle was from Zetterlin. Here's Hignett though. And now Smith. And back towards Jess. Comes to Gary Smith. Oh, and it's off the, off the legs of Dykstra and away. The big keeper dealing with everything at the moment. Here's Russell Anderson, and he scuffed it somewhat. Goal kick. Well, big see about it again. It's, it's probably been Aberdeen's best passing movement. Jess is unlucky. Smith hits it really well. And it wasn't out of the textbook, but it was effective. Nice has not missed a game since he came to Dundee United almost a couple of years ago. White's free kick, looking for Winters, but I don't think he even saw it coming. Well, next Saturday, choose your channel on the road to Euro 2000. Scotland against Estonia from Tynecastle, Saturday at 2 o'clock on Sky Sports 1, or if you prefer, England against Bulgaria on Sky Sports 2. Well, it's nice to see the number one team being on the number one channel there. <laughs> I knew you were going to say something like that. Gillis. Oops, Buckins miss kick. So Dundee United edging the possession, but only just. Aberdeen uh, building things up quite nicely, but it's not really falling for them where it matters. No, I think you're spotting there, Ian. Uh, you need the loot. Very compact, nice, neat, tidy passing from times. And they've got the all important goal. And they're looking for another one now. And Jim Patterson is in all sorts of space here, which was quickly closed down. The cross was deflected, and Leighton gets there at the second attempt. Well, the good ball to play again for United. And if this ball had been put inside, Jim Patterson had a chance. Jim Leighton did well under pressure from Dodds there. 
Newell. Can't help thinking that Aberdeen are playing like a side with a little bit of short in confidence here in there. As you say, they're trying to make sure everything's done properly, the passing. It doesn't seem to be incisive enough. Darren Patterson finding Jim Patterson. Smith, uh, as usual, not far away from him. by White, not particularly cleanly so, Newell won the header, Anderson charging his way across the halfway line, it was a fine tackle by Easton though to win it back, and Smith is going to be in trouble for taking out Billy Dodds here, it's going to be a yellow card. No doubt whatsoever, Mike McCurry's right, he just can't barge into players from behind like that, Dodds did well, it's been a pretty because Smith's had a good game for Aberdeen so far. He's had some timely tackles on Jim Patterson. And that was late. And he's in the book. Yellow card for Gary Smith, who was sent off earlier in the season at Hearts. Easton. Jim Patterson. And it cannons off Winters. And behind for a corner. Bobby Winters. 26 goals uh, in the league for Dundee United, just over 100 games. Now at Aberdeen, of course, and eager to do, do so well against his former club. Leighton did not look at all convincing. He completely missed that, but survived it. I think he was put off by his own player there. Ian and Derek White got in the way there, and Aberdeen were lucky that there was nobody looking at the bank post. Now a chance for Aberdeen to break, but chance really and that was a anxious moment for the veteran keeper Jim Layton yeah, you see him coming here and it's actually Gary Smith if you need has somebody at the back post there Aberdeen could easily have found themselves 2-0 down all good goalkeepers always blame someone else and anything happens anyway don't they I've noticed that yeah <laughs> here's Jess Goldmark scoops it up in the air. Zetterland. Anderson. Now Winters. Looking for Newell. Skoldmark was always going to get there first though. As was Zetterland then. Here's Derek White. Well, that just about sums up Aberdeen that. It's going to drift away. In fact. It'll only be a throw. Yeah, we've spoken about this before. That Aberdeen seems to be a, a team that are, are waiting for something to happen instead of going and making it happen. They're just going, not going through the motions, but they're not really incisive enough for my liking. Inside the final five minutes of the first half, got Tanner Dice. And Jess in his second spell with Aberdeen. to hoping to keep a clean sheet today. It would only be his third in 11 matches this season. Now Dodds, set up by Miller, and Miller's touch! And Leighton's save, well, the two ex-Aberdeen men almost combined then. Again, a tremendous little passing sequence here, Miller to Dodds. It's a good ball in, it's a good little touch from Joe Miller. But Jim Leighton to the rescue. White's big kick, and Newell's going to get to this. Newell to Jess. Hignett. And he's threaded it through to Jess. And that was cut out by Darren Patterson. It's a tremendous tackle, but Hignett and Jess, the two men that we wanted to see on the ball, carved on the right defence, and look at Mike Newell at the back post. Absolutely disgusted that Jess couldn't find him. Jess is corner. And it comes back to him. Oh dear, oh dear. I'll let you talk about that one, Robbo. Well, there's no doubt that Ian Jess 
is full of quality and he gets this one horribly wrong it's on his bad foot you see him try to whip it in low and hard but as I said before it went a wee bit high and a wee bit wide and not terribly handsome yeah it's not quite uh, not quite on target that you could say Newell Gillis, that's a neat pass to Winters he's got support from Hignett, Newell and Jess but might go it alone oh what a save from Dijkstra to deny his former teammate well we spoke about Billy Dodge earlier on one to go what would Robbie Winters have paid for that one to have sneaked in the corner it's a magnificent strike but Dijkstra there diving the ball's moving away and that is a great fingertip save Dijkstra has stopped everything that has come towards him so far. Another corner now for Aberdeen though. Jess to the near post. Dodds now. And he's nearly snapped it into touch. It's good defending with Billy Dodds. Winters losing out, but it comes to Perry. Hignett. Jess. Helped on by Winters. Hignett couldn't get a shot in. Tried to thread it through to Newell. And again, it didn't quite come off for Aberdeen. Well, this is more like it for Aberdeen. Hignett and Jess involved again. Good little touch for Winters. And it's just not happening for them at the moment. It's an encouraging end to a disappointing first half for them. The side flag was up there, but it won't matter. They'll just let Leighton get on with it, as I'm sure he would be keen to do. On the stroke of half-time almost. Towering kick, which uh, Skoldmark dealt with in a rather unorthodox way. White now to Hignett. Dodds. Oh, he stepped away from White. And he's found McSwigan. Miller's away on the right. Dodds again. Zetterlund is arriving. Chested it well away. Gary Smith is in again. Well, Billy Dodds having a good afternoon. He's been involved in all United's good stuff. Easton. He's conceding the throw, which will be taken by Jim Patterson in first half injury time at Tannadice. And a bit of shirt tugging from uh, Harry Smith. Yeah, a little bit, yep. Yeah. You can see there the left hand. Grabbing Gary McSwiggins back there. And that has come across to join Jim Patterson. And it's he who will swirl it in, but Leighton, no problem on that one. Yeah, it's a comfortable take by Jim Leighton. And it's half-time. And Dundee United, who have had much the better of the recent encounters between these two teams, are a goal ahead thanks to Gary McSwiggan. And he really did plant this one firmly in the corner. Snapshot. Didn't seem to catch it as cleanly as he might have wished, but does he care? No, not at all. Aberdeen have been promising at times without really clicking in the areas where it matters. At the break at Tannadice, it's Dundee United 1, Aberdeen 0. It's another big weekend of live football coming up next weekend on Sky Sports, as well as the two full internationals on Saturday afternoon. The England and Bulgaria under-21s are in action on Friday night from 7 on Sky Sports 2. And next Sunday from midday there's more football league action as Barnsley take on Port Vale. It's another big weekend of football coming up next weekend here on Sky Sports. Tonight at Tannadice it's 1-0 to Dundee United over Aberdeen. That's the story of the first 45 minutes, a lively first half. As you can see, Gary McSwigan's goal has been the difference between the two sides.
Just one booking to report from the first 45, Gary Smith of Aberdeen. That seems to happen more and more for him. And the action here is, well, United have edged it, but just, but Aberdeen have finished the stronger of the two sides. So it's 1-0 United, and Charlie, you said their hunger would serve, serve them well tonight, and it's looking that way, isn't it? Yeah, well, they changed things around a little bit, Aberdeen. They went with Perry, they took him out of midfield and put him back in the defensive area with Derek White, and they pushed Russell Anderson uh, further forward, which was a bit of a surprise, and they were counting each other out for the first 15 minutes or so. But I thought once United got that first goal, I thought the penetration and the work rate of the forward players in particular, I did touch on the fact that Robbie Winders too much relies on his pace. Neil looks as if he can create things for him, but it's all been done far too deep for United. But Dundee United have been impressive since they scored, but Aberdeen must get further up the pitch because they're too deep. But before United scored, Charlie, it looked like the Dons might go one up, and Craig Hignett wonderful. is always busy, isn't he? It was a wonderful opportunity, and you, you would have fancied any Aberdeen player it was Craig Hignett. His pace gets him away. I've been critical of Dykstra, but this is where he's strong. He makes silly mistakes at times, but for me, Craig Hignett with his quality, a little chip now. A little pitch over the advancing goalkeeper and it would have been 1-0 Aberdeen. And that would have pleased his manager because he did start fairly promisingly. And when it went 1-up uh, for, for United, it wasn't in any spectacular form, but it, it, it was a decent enough it finish, wasn't. but not a great one. It, it wasn't, but it was within like 30 seconds or so within that miss from Hignett. And suddenly, you know, what, what you're wasted in one end, you're giving away cheaply in the other. It's not a clean strike. And Leighton is a little bit blinded, maybe to his defence. But that's the, that's the secret of hitting targets, Jim. You've got to hit the targets. You may get lucky, and he does. But those two looked, and Billy Dodds held up from well. That's a combination, and that's how it works. Are they becoming a partnership that will yes. serve United well? Yes, and uh, the reason being is that Aberdeen are playing far too deep. So the relationship between Newell and Winters, here's what you see here. I mean, that's great vision. The far side, Joe Miller is coming back, and he's offside. But McSweegan is never offside. We'll give the, the credit to goalkeeper... And the linesman, it can be tight from. But McSweegan on that occasion was never offside. And that's the understanding they're getting now. The partnership and the thinking already starting to, to produce. And here it is coming the other way now, Charlie. Well, of course it is. But look, I'm coming late. Billy Dodds knows if he gets in the area, McSweegan will find him. It's good vision. Here's the work rate of the first run from the striker. The second angled run from the other striker. Hungry to score goals. That's been the difference with United forward and the Aberdeen forward so far. Winters would love to score at Tannadice tonight for Aberdeen. Yep. And he very nearly did, didn't he? That's a great save. It was a good save. Uh, it was a, a bit keen, maybe too keen to, to get a shot in. Unfortunately, didn't get it properly there. But it was a good strike and a good save. Well, it's 1-0 United as it stands at half-time at Tannadice. Aberdeen with it all to do tonight. Join us for all the action from the second half at Tannadice. It's half time and Dundee United are one up on Aberdeen. Gary McSwigan, the goal scorer tonight so far. Charlie, what will the Dons reply be in the second 45? Well, I think the manager will fire them up, Jim, and I think they need to change something. Jess has hardly really got in the game. And when he's been advanced, he's not really made it count. I think they should maybe switch Hignett and Jess and let Hignett be fuller advanced, and I think that might help Aberdeen. Okay, let's rejoin John Robertson and Ian Crocker. Thank you, Jim. Dundee United hoping for a second successive league victory after a bleak start to the season for them. Gary McSwiggan's first half goal separating the sides at the moment. And they really have ruled against Aberdeen of late. The Dons haven't won here at Tannadice for five years. And have only beaten Dundee United once in the last ten meetings. That was last season. Alec Miller's Aberdeen. Now, I've got to find a spark from somewhere. I remember saying that last week for an awful long time, and they never really did. But they look livelier than uh, last week, it must be said, if, uh, if only a little livelier. And it'll be Dundee United who start the second half. Aberdeen in their change kit of white shirts. We're still getting used to see, seeing Billy Dodds in that colour shirt. Firm header by Buchan. Dundee United's throw.
Bernard Pasquale, the Frenchman. He was recommended to the club by Roger Bowley, who also joined Dundee United in the summer, but uh, he's kind of disappeared without trace at the moment, a bit out of favour. I was wondering what happened to him, he looked quite lively early on in the season, Ian. I thought he must have been injured. Chess just trickled off his toes and out of play. Returned to Aberdeen after a largely unsuccessful spell with Coventry. Smith's clearance went straight to Jim Patterson who gets away from Gillies, but not from Smith. He's really timing his tackles superbly in this game. Yep, Jim Patterson again. Skips past Ricky Gillis. I mean, I've just caught him here, but Gary Smith was waiting. And it's another well-timed tackle on Patterson. It said there's been a good contest between those pair. That one's going to bounce through to Jim Layton. He's won five of his uh, eight tackles. And he's been very timely with his tackles. Yeah, he came in well there, though. That's, it's really good tackling that. As I say, the only blemish was the uh, rather late one in Billy Dodds that earned them the only yellow card of the match. Oh dear, Jess and Anderson both left it, but it has gone through to Newell. Here's Jess. Charged out of play by Miller. Fired up against his former club. Buckins throw. Away by Skoldmark. On by Dodds. Perry's touch. Straight to Easton. Miller. Leighton will come and will claim. Here is Smith. Nice turn by Hickman, away from Easton. Looking for Winters. Newell now. Again, this is promising from Aberdeen. Until then. Miller stepped in. Zetterlund offside, surely, against McSwiggan. I'm kind of expecting these sort of derby matches, a few more blood and thunder tackles to be going in. Yeah, that's a strange thing today. It's, we uh, criticised Aberdeen's lack of passing last week, and again, they, they just seem to be going through the motions, waiting for things to happen. I'm sure if anybody can get them going in that department, then a strapping big centre forward might know the man. Well, here's Smith. Aim towards Newell. Away by Skoldmark, Jess's shot was deflected wide for a corner. Well, Ian Jess, this is a man along with Hignett who wants to see in the ball. And this is more than a reasonable chance. Good play by Newell there, putting the defender under pressure. And the Ian Jess shot was fizzing towards the target before being deflected wide. But Ian's sixth corner of the game to Dundee United's one. But it's Dundee United who have the one goal so far the line but it's come to Hignett Anderson back to Hignett and away by Dodds and here he goes Miller Buckins challenge and he's got the throw in his favour He threw the throwing out. We'll put that down to conditions and a, a slippy ball, but earlier on there, Ian, once again, we talked with him, pulled some man in the back post. Could have saved a, an Aberdeen equaliser. Well, I don't know who Gilly saw over there. Well, it was a wild ball to say the least. Aberdeen really need to start get back into this game and get into it quickly. And now Dundee United 
are threatening with Patterson and he sets it up for Settelon who screwed it well wide in the end Oh, it's good play from young Jim Patterson again he skips inside a couple of challenges rolls it beautiful inside to Zetterlin and I think he takes that with the wrong foot it was on to be struck first time on the left foot and Aberdeen could have been in trouble as you can see the weather in Scotland is not at its best probably stop raining about next May won't it I can assure you Ian you'll probably find out it gets a lot worse than this Dodds now Paul McSwiggan dragged it across the face of goal it's uh, it nearly stayed in there actually if, uh, some of the reactions have been a little quicker and the United could have kept the pressure off well a superb link at work again the two Dundee United strikers have been very very impressive the work rate's been high they've been linking up well creating chances for each other once again Dodds and McSwiggan just about putting United two up won by Zetterland and just dropped away from him that time Jess now Smith I dare say he might look to pick out Newell but Newell shoved Mal pass so that will be a free kick to the home side uh, Mike Newell can't criticise his, his endeavour he's thrown himself about he's being physical I think he had an early tug on Morris Morris there can't lack his commitment. Joined Aberdeen from Birmingham last year after a rather strange spell with the Midlands club. Not really settled in there. Patterson now. Dundee United bearing down on Aberdeen's goal again. McSwiggan trying to do what he did in the first half, but that time it was blocked and away by Anderson. Zetterlin. Pasquale finds Miller. He's going to have a run at Buchan. Buchan stayed with him. And before the throwing can be taken, the physio will be needed for Jim Patterson. Well, Jim Patterson's had a good game. He's been very lively in that left flank causing Aberdeen troubles, but that was a real crunching tackle in there. And the youngster looks like he's picked up a little knock on the knee. Magnus. Paul Sturrock scored over 100 goals for Dundee United as a player. It appeared that he's turning things around gradually. Tim Patterson's on his feet. And Scott can get on with a throw. Newell charged down, Skull marks ball, and he's got the free kick. Newell. Well, this is exactly the kind of aggression that Aberdeen needs to show. Mike Newell there fighting for a lost cause and winning it. Wasn't in the mood to swap shirts just yet. Derek White. Mark Perry, who is facing his former club, having left Under United in the summer. Easton. Mal passes header. And here's Miller. Hassled by Buckham. Skoldmark. This is a nice move from Dundee United. Zetterlund slipping it through to McSwigan. And it just bobbled off. Dots his boots. He's kicked it in though. And he's delivered a cross which I think swung out first. Yes, it did. He went behind first. Well, Billy Dodds, tireless as ever. He's really worked his socks off today. And that's a great ball in there. But as you said, it just went outside. A clean surface before Jim Wayne got a hold of it. Oh, 
Miller. <laughs> we might have to try that one again, I think. Pasquale's throw. Dodds. Easton, Patterson is outside of him, and that's where it's going to go. Tackle from Gillis. Jim Patterson's throw, and Swiggin came to meet it. And gave it back. This is nice from Dundee United, saved by Leighton, but the re... Oh, it's off the underside of the crossbar. And Swiggin almost claimed his second. Well, it's a magnificent passing move in there. It's a great strike from Zetland. A good save for Leighton. How unlucky can Gary McSwiggin be? It crashes off the underside of the bar. And for about a quarter of an inch, Dundee United would have been two up. Zetterlund had the initial shot, finds Dodds. Back to Zetterlund. And just whipped off his toes. Not really meant as a back pass by Perrick. Oh, Tom, but what a strike this is from Lars Zetterlund. It's a great save from Leighton. And McSwiggan does everything right. And can't believe his luck as it hits the crossbar. Are not really in it at the moment. Here's Dodds. I think that's going to just drift away and out of play. Rare mistake by Dodds. Well, I think he's been the difference between the teams, Ian, because what Dodds does that Aberdeen strikers don't do is he comes short for the ball and drags the defender short and links up play superbly. And that's really where well, Mike Newell and Robert Winters aren't doing that, and that's how United are controlling the game and creating the better chances. Mike McCurry has given Dundee United a free kick and Dodds will be on the prowl again, I think you can be sure. It's the Swede Magnus Skoldmark. Short to Dodds. Miller. Anderson to Jess. Winters. Foul by Malpass. Well, Malpass will know all about the dangers of Robbie Winters, but I just feel he's got to do more of that. He's got to come short, link up play, and try and get the ball wide and get back in the box for the finish. Craig Higgins, Russell Anderson now. Jess. Gillis, Perry, Gillis, and Winters back across, dug out by Patterson. Well, this is more like it from Aberdeen, it's a great deep ball here from Ricky Gillis and Winters does well. And Ian Jess not quite reacting to the, the header across the face of the goals. Well, Robbie Winters would love to score his first goal and Alex Miller would quite like him to do it as well as Bucken has a go yeah, it's a sweet strike here from Jamie Bucken the Dun United defenders just backing off there as Bucken came through and that's a great strike just two or three yards too wide and up at the other end Gary McSwiggan went rather close as well yeah it's a tremendous strike here as we said from Zetterland Leighton does magnificent, and really you can't do anything better than this, he's put it ball high over the keeper and it's crashed down off the bar. So unlucky for Gary McSwiggan. Here is Winters. Skoldmark back to Malpas. Dodds helps it on, looking for McSwiggan. Aberdeen have it though. Perry. Derek White straight to Skoldmark. That's well. Anderson. Perry. 
aimed towards Newell, but dealt with by Darren Patterson. Hignett matches onto it though, and was cut it into by Jim Patterson. Yeah, it's a rash challenge from the youngster there. Hignett just holding the ball. Patterson perhaps. A touch lucky not to get a yellow card. Zetterlund's header. Back in by Bucken. Away by Skoldmark. Gary Smith. That'll be Dundee United's throw. Smith was claiming it was his. But then I suppose he would. Both these teams were dumped out of the Scottish League Cup by lower division sides. Although Aberdeen lost at Hibernian, who were relegated, of course, from the Premier last season. Dundee United lost at third division, Ross County. United seem to be going through a scrappy spell at the moment. Aberdeen have certainly got their tails up. They start the second half, beginning to clone to it. But it was United that came closest yet again with that tremendous McSwiggin effort. Darren Patterson just hooking it out. He'll be off on European Championship qualifying duty with Northern Ireland this week. Perry now to Anderson. Newell. Here's Smith. And a decent cross, and Hignett, well, it just bounced straight off him. I don't think he quite expected it to come through to him. Well, this is Aberdeen's best chance of the match. It's a tremendous run from Gary Smith here. A great ball, Winters misses a header. And what a chance it is for Hignett, and of all the men, they expect to have a good first touch. Craig Hignett's a man. You just see Winters missing there, maybe puts off Craig Hignett. And he'll be cursing his luck, as will his manager. Madison's cross, and the White had to knock it over because that was a pretty awkward cross for Aberdeen to deal with. It's another teasing ball from Parson and White has to get there. Because as you expect, Billy Dodge was coming right in behind them. White will be keeping a check on his old pal Dodds as the corner comes in. Leighton will pluck it out of the air though. On his 90th cap for Scotland in Lithuania recently. Perry. Anderson. There's a man on Gary Smith, but he found Newell. And it's rather clumsily bobbled away from Mike Newell. And he might uh, he might have guessed from the reaction that it hasn't gone his way. No, I think I agree with you. I, I didn't realise that Mike Newell has obviously got used to the Scottish brogue <laughs> talking to the referee there and uh, exchanging pleasantries. <laughs> Here's Anderson. This possessed by Malpass. Who was then fouled by Anderson. Well, I didn't see much in this. No, I don't think that's a free kick, but... Uh, Olo argues Mr McCurry, he's had a good afternoon, it's, it's kept the game flowing. Only one booking so far as well. Mal pass fouled then by a player who's 17 years younger than he is, just to make him feel really old. Talking of oldie players, comes Leighton. Bounced awkwardly for the home side, flicked on by Newell, Paul Winters. And still Winters, nice turn, straight at Dykstra though. Well, Morris Marpus in trouble here with a long bouncing ball, Winters wriggles away. The United defenders do well to stay on their feet, but it's too close to Dykstra. And once again the big Dutch goalkeeper gathers the ball to safety. So Dundee United... 12 attempts on goal, but Aberdeen really not far behind. On target, four for Dundee United. You get the feeling that Aberdeen just need a little bit of luck from somewhere, don't they? 
Well, it's luck or inspiration, Ian. They need something. Uh, Hignett and Jess looking most likely to provide it. I'll go credit to Newell. He's not giving up the ghost up there. He's put himself about, but they really do need something to happen for them. Terry. Flick on, but nobody there to latch onto it. A point which McSwiggan quickly acknowledged. Here's Perry. Winters. Still they boo. Chess unable to get a touch on it. A chance for Dundee United to break with Jim Patterson. Zetterlund. He's spraying it around nicely. Here's Dodds. And White got a vitally important touch then. And Dodds then fouled him. Well, that's another tremendous passing sequence for United. They're knocking the ball about really well. And that's the difference between the two teams. United are passing it short, getting it into men's feet, running off them. Aberdeen just don't seem to be doing that at the moment. It's an excellent pass from White to Newell. And there are plenty of bodies arriving, looking for the cross. Sadly for Aberdeen, it didn't come in, but they do have a chance to send one in from the corner flag. Jim Patterson will go to that near post where he uh, proved rather important <laughs> earlier in the game. Kicking one off the line. Gillis. Hignett. Smith, and that's going to carry to Winters, is it? No, it was a clever little header by Malpass, who was so sure then of everything that was going on around him, he knew what he was doing. Well, I'm not so sure he did here, he just got, seemed to be getting caught out there. But as usual, Morris knocks it away, to make sure that they yeah, don't concede that. All important goal. Eighth corner of the game for Aberdeen, it's going to come to Hignett, chance down magnificently by Malpass. Is now going to turn to a winger. Oh, I don't think Morris is as daft as that. He knows the old legs won't, get, won't quite get out the line, but he's still there. <laughs> Down the line from Malpass looking for Dodds. A cross came back and he was covering. Moving from one side of the field to the other. Pasquale now, Zetterlin, Miller, Pasquale's going outside of him, Miller won't need to use him though, but the cross, comfortable for Leighton, it's 50-50 on possession in the second half so far. Dijkstra has become a bit of a cult hero here. It's an enormous kick, it's going to carry right through to his opposite number. Yeah, well, I think that was downhill, downwind. Um, Thanks, sir. Certainly has a, a lusty clearance, to say the least. Newell to Hignett. The block was from Easton and it's put Dodds away. He's got Zetterland and McSwigan for support. And he finds Gary McSwigan! Oh! He came within inches. Well, surely sealing it for Dundee United then. Well, Derek White's not happy, he thinks, that he's offside. He certainly knows it's a great pass there from Billy Dawes to McSwiggan. And he was within a quarter of an inch of scoring earlier on. And that time, he was all two inches out. McSwiggan really could have had a hat-trick by now. But he's still got the all-important goal. He gives United the all-important lead. Attempts on goals in the game. Here go Aberdeen though with Gillis. Perry. 
Smith. Oh, and the ricochet ends up back with Dykstra. He's done it again, Dykstra. Oh, it's had a real awkward bounce in here as well. well. I'll tell you what, Big C getting a wee bit of encouragement now. I think the next one, he might just give that wee bit extra. <laughs> Jim Patterson now to Dodds. Lars Zetterlin finding McSwigan. White. Malpass. Hignett now. Former Middlesbrough man who also played for Crew in England had a storming start to his Scottish career. But uh, like Aberdeen, of course, it's gone a little flat in the last few weeks. Here's Jamie Buchan now. Stepped easily away from Miller. An encouraging run, but sadly, on the slippery surface, he stumbles. And away goes Miller. away for support which truly arrives in the shape of Pasquale look at the space Patterson has now and he delivered a decent cross it's not bad oh McSwiggan with a free header and the chances are flowing thick and fast for him well it's another magnificent ball from Patterson he looks up early sees McSwiggan peeling off and puts it right in his forehead and Gary McSwiggan again, he may be cursing these misses. That's four great chances McSwiggan's had. He's put one away, probably the hardest one in the lot. And I hope, or he'll hope, that United don't rue those chances. He really has peeled away into some good positions, McSwiggan. Skull mark. There's a clash of heads then, and Newell is down, and so is Anderson. It certainly looks a bad one, Ian. Anderson there got a cut, there seemed to be blood, and Newell's as well. I think the two of them just header each other here. There we go up. Ooh. Bang, oh. And I think Anderson will be lucky if he takes any more part in this game. It looks if he may well have been knocked out there. That really was a nasty one. And Anderson appears to have come off worse. Not that Newell is in a great condition either, as you can see. It's drawn oh, blood with him. That. Alec Miller will be concerned. Well, next Saturday on the road to the 2000 European Championships, it's Scotland against Estonia from Tyne Castle. That's on Saturday at 2 o'clock on Sky Sports 1. If you prefer, though, on Sky Sports 2, at the same time, it's England against Bulgaria from Wembley. And Newell has gone off for treatment, but Russ and Anderson, they're uh, still attending to. Newell might need uh, not a bandage and stitches. It really was a, a bad hit. You see the two of them committed in that. Looks very nasty. Newell away to get stitched up in the dressing room. Looks nasty every time you see that, unfortunately. A real crack of heads. And Alex Miller will be forced into a, a change, perhaps. Anderson's coming round. A real crunching thud. As the teammates glided with each other. Anderson looks uh, ready to continue. Newell's being attended to off the field at the moment. So they'll wait and see what they have to do to him before deciding on a change. Well, I'm sure you'll find that Newell will come back. Stitched up. And still ready to give full commitment. You should get one of those bandages right round his head, shouldn't you? Because footballers always look good when they've got one of those. I'll take your word for that, Ian.
Smith. There's another uh, crack ahead there. Dodds was hurt, but he's okay. Yeah, these Scottish strikers are made of stern stuff, Ian. I'll take your word for it. Here's Zettelen. Todds again. Just under a quarter of an hour to go. Dundee United leading 1-0. In truth, it should have been by a few more. And, oh, Leighton! He was almost foiled by his own man, Perry. A lot of communication there, but they've got it away, the danger's still on. Jim Patterson, blocked. Mark pass now. Skull mark. Dodds. Miller, and he's got his cross in towards McSwigan. Back now to Patterson. McSwigan still out there. Uh, McSwigan, who crossed that, had been in there waiting for service. He would have complained about that one, I think. Here's White. Looks like Aberdeen will have to uh, make a change. Mike Newell is not going to return to action. Blood streaming from his head in the uh, clash of heads with Russell Anderson. David Rousen has come on, but this was uh, almost an embarrassing moment for Aberdeen. Yes, a total lack of communication there. Jim Lane appeared to shoot and go for it. But Perry got in his way, and fortunately for Aberdeen, the ball didn't drop to any United forwards. Rousen on for Newell. Here's Easter. Away towards Winters, oh, and it just got taken out of his path temporarily by Darren Patterson, but here is Winters. Oh, that is a wild and woeful cross from Winters. Well, that just sums up Robbie's day so far. I'm sure he's come back here home to break his duck. It was nearly a superb ball from Hignett. Winters takes a touch. And he fires that one well over the bar. And I don't even know if we can rescue him by saying it was a ball. Well, he was, he was rated at £700,000 in the deal that took Billy Dodds the other way. Dodds rated at half a million. But uh, he's certainly fared better today. Winters, mind you, perhaps uh, lacking match sharpness after not getting much of a shout in the early part of the season with Dundee United. Well, I think you're right there, Ian. There's no doubt he's not as sharp as he could be. But he's a quality player, he'll come back to it. Certainly Paul Sturrock seems to have got the better end of the deal at the moment. I'm East. sure Robbie will keep working away. That's a lovely touch by McSwiggan, is it? No, I take it back, is not it? Miller couldn't quite get that. Well, I think we're right with the initial shoot. That was a tremendous little touch from McSwiggan. Joe just couldn't quite get on the end of it. the second Sunday running, Aberdeen find themselves a goal down. <laughs> Miller, back by Smith to Leighton, Dodds is going to close him down. Derek White, being closed into a corner at the moment and that's about all he could do. Aberdeen certainly at sixes and sevens at the moment, but United haven't pressed home the advantage. Well, it's still 1 0. Aberdeen still have a chance of getting something out of the game. Pasquale's cross. <laughs> Jess finding Rouse in the substitute, and that's a peach of a pass for Craig Hignett. What a chance for Aberdeen to equalise! And it's a chance that is wasted. By Hignes, and he knows, he knows and that should have been 1 1. Well, once again, Craig Hignes, a great run, it's a superb pass here. It looks like he's going to hit it, he checks, then strikes it again. 
And once again, Craig Hignett, the man with the quality you feel to get Aberdeen back in the game, this time misses the target. Normally, a pretty cool finisher as well. Yeah, I think that just as we stayed earlier on, Aberdeen and a team that aren't playing with a great deal of confidence and you feel if they've been on a winning run, I think they would have slotted that home no problem at all. The fans felt that Winters was being held by Scobar, but there wasn't much of a complaint from the player. Dunkster's kick, and he might want to blame the weather for that one. But he might struggle to. <laughs> oh, you're right there, Ian. It wasn't the greatest uh, clearance when you've seen Dykes or Lonsome so far tonight. Jess now. Rouson. White. Headed out by Skoldmark. with the throw. Mike Newell, we understand, required three stitches in the head wound after a clash of heads with his teammate Russell Anderson. Winters now. He's got the cross in. Here's Perry. Rousen, and it's come through to Jamie Buchan, the angle is acute, and there was nobody from Aberdeen in that six-yard box to get on the end of that one. Well, you're actually spot on there, Ian, it was a, a good ball through, winners left it, Buchan got in there, and I'll tell you what, it wasn't a bad ball across the six-yard line, you see it here, winners lets it go, Buchan gets in, but incredibly there is nobody in the box at all attacking the cross. Unbelievable, that. Is White Hignett Smith and it's come to Hignett surely this time oh what a save from Dijkstra outstanding well see Dijkstra once again the ball breaks perfectly for Hignett he takes his touch it's a great strike but once again Dijkstra when he's been called upon he's done everything right and it comes from Jess Hignett with another chance to have a pop here and that one skidded through thanks for protecting it yet again what a save it was before the corner it's a good touch from Hignett it's not a bad streak again it's a deflection but if United do go and win this game although a huge debt to the big Dutchman in the goals Leighton hacking it out, much to the delight of the home fans. Dundee United are making a change with Joe Miller going off and Andy McLaren coming on in his place. Well, it's winner for winner, Ian. Joe Miller's worked hard today against his former club. And if the fullback thinks he's getting it off easy, this boy McLaren is a really good player, he's very lively. Got a bit of pace to go down the flanks. 25, but he's the second longest serving player at Tanadice behind Mr. Malpass. A good 12 or 13 years behind Morris as well, though. <laughs> Just over five minutes remaining then for Aberdeen to try and salvage a point. And although that one broke down to them then, at least this week they're looking like they could salvage a point whereas last week in truth against Kilmarnock they did not well, you're right again Ian as I said, they're looking for more passion from them, they're trying hard to get back in the game, and really United should have had them finish by now but at 1-0 Aberdeen has still got that slight chance Bill Hignett will be cursing his luck 
and more importantly cussing Steve Dykstra. Here's Jesper, Gillis ahead of him. Still Jess. Away by Malpass. Smith. Jess once more. Perry. Rousen. And Hingdon again! Oh, side netting and he finally was stopped by the keeper. Dykstra once more because it's a corner. Well, Steve Dykstra again. United. We're going to rock under every pressure. There's a, just a hopeful ball through here, but it works great for them. Hingdon gets in behind, and again he hits a target, and again a magnificent left handed save from Big Seed. It skimmed off Hingdon's head. Russell Anderson. Here's Jess. Wigan and there is the danger of course that Aberdeen could get caught on the break magnificent interception by Orasen away by Malpass and Settler beat Hignett to it Aberdeen's match with Kilmar last week almost petered out near the end. There's not much chance of this one petering out. It's becoming a frantic finale. And the manager's fuming at the tackles that were flying in. Well, they certainly... This is more like it from Aberdeen, the passion that we're lacking last week. Everybody getting stuck in here, it is a derby. Crunching tackle there from Zetterman. And Lars Zetterman has got a yellow card for that challenge. <laughs> Zetterman on Gillis. It's Rousen then to take the free kick. Anderson's cross, and this time it's off the post, but here, Aberdeen again with White, he couldn't quite get the shot in. Smith is in there, it was he whose header came back off the post. Now it's Jess. Free kick to Dundee United. Well, it's been an unbelievable turnaround in the last 15 minutes. It's another great ball from Anderson. A tremendous header. And Aberdeen's locks out as it strikes the post. It's a great effort there. It thuds off the bottom of Dykes' post. And United are still hanging on to this 1-0 lead. He's just going to get there as well, but so is Leighton. Smith now is popping up everywhere, <laughs> having hit the post a moment ago. And the offside flag was up anyway as Hignett was dispossessed. And Jim Leighton, I don't think they've taken the free kick, have they? No, the free kick will be taken now. <laughs> well, that was bizarre. Oh, that was a strange incident because I thought Aberdeen had taken the free kick. I thought Jim Lane here. No, he's not. But did the referee? I didn't hear a whistle for the referee giving a, an offside decision there. It's a strange one. Smith now. Away by Easton. And all hands to the Dundee United pumps. Here goes Smith though. Hignett on the far post. Didn't quite know where it had bounced. Well, what an end to the game. The 90-minute mark up. Still Aberdeen plug away. Rousen's cross. Met by Skoldmark. Gillis. Jess. Oh, he's just looked that too high. 
Pegnut went down in the box, but it all ends in smiles. Yeah, I don't think there was much in this. Pegnut just got a little nudge. The referee, Mike McCurry, was in a perfect position to see the incident. It's a good ball from Jesse. See Pegnut moving in, but no, no penalty there. Jim Patterson is wasted away by White, though. What about a man of the match, John? Well, tonight, Dodds and McSwiggan have done well up front. They uh, it's had a tremendous last 15 minutes. But for me, the all-round performance of Bully Dodds up front just wins tonight's man of the match award. We'll be delighted with that against his old club. Surprisingly, the Dundee United fans are whistling for the finish. A rousing finish from Aberdeen. Well, they have showed what they are capable of. Rousen over the top for Winters. The first time centre, Perry is in there, but uh, I suppose you have to say that Dykstra was always going to be the favourite in that situation yeah big dice again they are taking it superbly in fairness to him he's pushed Billy Dodds all the way for the man of the match award he's had four magnificent saves but for me Dodds has just edged it now an awkward up and under and Dykstra comes oh this time he's fumbled it and his teammates came to his rescue well Dundee United nearly blew it Right at the end, then Skullmark is uh, managed flat out now. Well, this is one thing you don't want to do as a defender facing on goals. You can't let the ball bounce. Dijkstra absolutely thumps into him. And then United are very, very lucky to get away with it. What a finish to the match. Dijkstra thumps into Skullmark. What an incredible finish. When he comes uh, into you like that, you know about it, as we are witnessing with Magnus Skullmark. Well, you see Skolmark eyes on the ball, Dijkstra comes, boom, off, oh, my word. He got the right knee, flush in the cheek. And I'll tell you what, we've we'll seen more than a few stars tonight. <laughs> Ouch. It's an anxious finish to the game for Paul Stewart, the Dundee United manager. Skolmark, though, is on his feet. Referee will restart. You had to stop there so that Skullmark could get treatment. I think he was uh, he's trying to figure out who had possession. Skullmark checking all his teeth for student. Yeah, the main thing is uh, short of one or two things. <laughs> White then. Dodds now. Dundee United finally wrap it up. Jim Patterson! Smothered by Leighton. It's going to need one big kick, but there's no time even for that. And Dundee United under Paul Sturrock have moved off the bottom of the table. And they've moved above Aberdeen into sixth place. Dykstra, though, made several fine saves tonight. He did the business at one end, this man did it at the other. Gary McSwiggan with the winning goal. He might have had a few more, but he got just the one, and it counted in the end. Straight into the corner from Gary McSwiggan. Billy Dodds was the man of the match, a handshake for his former Aberdeen teammate, Jim Layton. McSwiggan was the match winner, though. And things are looking up at Tannadice. Dundee United are off the bottom. They shot up to sixth in the table, courtesy of this victory. It ends at Tannadice. Dundee United won. Aberdeen nil. Coming up on Sky Sports, a reminder of our big day of live international football coming up next Saturday. Scotland take on Estonia and England face Bulgaria, both games exclusively live at 2 o'clock. Scotland against Estonia is on Sky Sports 1, England versus Bulgaria is on Sky Sports 2. So a great choice of live international football coming up next Saturday on Sky Sports. 
and a reminder that on Sky Digital, you can keep up to date with Sky Sports News 24 hours a day and for Manchester United fans, your very own channel. MUTV, every night from 6 on Sky Digital. Tonight at Tannadice, Dundee United have notched up a very valuable 1-0 victory over Aberdeen. Join us for a reaction to that after this. Dundee United have beaten Aberdeen by one goal to nil tonight at Tannadice. 30 attempts at goal, but just one goal, and it came from Gary McSwagan. Two bookings on the night, Smith of Aberdeen and Lars Zetterland of Dundee United. And territorially, well, United shaded it in the first half. It was a different story in the second half. Aberdeen came back very, very strongly, but they couldn't get level. Well, Davy Proven is with the winning goal scorer, Gary McSwagan, and man of the match, Billy Dodds. Well, Billy, United on top of the league tonight, but you've certainly moved off the bottom a good few places. That's a start, isn't it? As a start, we're not going to get carried away though. It's a hard game. Uh, it was always going to be a new Aberdeen would come here and try to show a bit of spirit. But uh, at the end of all, we've got three points. It's a magnificent result for us. You've only been here a couple of weeks now. Do you sense this club has turned the corner? I always said that. Uh, too many good players here. Uh, the way we started, we were unlucky against them, Fairman. Uh, we had a, most of the game. But the last two games, we've, uh, we've passed the ball about, which uh, Paul Sturrock wants here. So, we'll, I mean, we're delighted. We'll, we've moved up the league. That's the main thing. Pressure off. Gary, you're the man who got the goal that mattered tonight, uh, and you could have had a few more, couldn't you? Should have had a few more, aye. Yeah, it was a couple of sitters, but um, I got one, uh, happy with that, and it's two wins in the trot for the boys now, and uh, hopefully that will continue, you know. How are you enjoying the partnership with this man? Brilliant. Uh, it's been a breath of fresh air since he's came to the club. Uh, the, uh, the attitude of the boys have been great as well. Uh, it's been a whole team sort of effort, but um, we're just delighted to get three points tonight. Is that partnership with Billy likely to continue? Your contract's up tomorrow, isn't it? Where do you go from here? Well, um, I'll be speaking to the gaffer tomorrow morning again. Um, I'll take it there. I'll take it there this time. Uh, are you more inclined, though, that uh, you might stay? You're now back in the side uh, and scoring. I wouldn't say one way there. Billy, you can ask for a better start to down here. Two win bonuses, three goals. It's, it's going well for you, isn't it? Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, uh, I was. I mean, I want to hide to nothing here. I came here, we were bottom of the league, so uh, to get two results straight away for me is, uh, is brilliant for me. Well done, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. United, very pleased with that victory tonight. Yep. Charlie, as we heard there in David's interview, McSwagan out of contract very soon. Has he done enough to get another one? Well, it was told two weeks ago when Paul Sturrock arrived that it was up to him. He scored tonight. He scored, he scored five, and he would have won himself a contract. He would have deserved it tonight. Hey, I think he might do enough to earn a contract, but I do expect Paul Sturrock, although this team hung on at the end and probably overall maybe deserved to, to win the game, that he will add uh, new players to this squad. But uh, I think McSwigan looks like he'll get goals and that'll impress Paul Sturrock. And Charlie, a very sweet move for Billy Dodds from Aberdeen to Dundee United. A great night for him. Yeah, but we talk about partnerships, Jim, and this is what I like about Billy Dodds. He's a guy who will miss a lot of chances, but he makes other players tick. You know, Mike Newell didn't really get much service tonight and he found it hard to get involved with Robbie Winters and Jess at times. But Dodds makes players tick, he, he makes them come forward, he gets them involved, you know, and everything he did in his build-up play was to be positive for his team. Aberdeen actually started quite brightly, we know they finished particularly well, this is unlucky. I thought Robbie Winters maybe should have thrown himself, Robbo says in commentary he thought he was held back. This was a great opportunity for Hignett, he'll be disappointed because he could have scored two or three tonight, but they Dijkstra was uh, equal to that and did very well on that occasion. A good night for, for Steve Dijkstra, I think. I thought he should have chipped him here. I thought Hegner had the class to chip him. But you always must give credit to a goalkeeper. Within 30 seconds, there's a hold up. I know it's not a good strike and people maybe say they'll query the goalkeeper. He was blinded for me, as you can see from this angle, and it bobbles in. Just hit the target and you might get lucky, and he did. But a significant moment there, they came back so positively and scored straight after the Ignit miss. Sturrock will love this because what, what he does with these strikers, as he did when he was at the United forward, is that they, they love this crossover run, so here they do it again, Miller holds it up, suddenly it's Dodds creating for Miller. So there was a lot of creation, a lot of invention, and you have to say looking at Aberdeen's forwards for, you know, the first 70 minutes of this game, didn't really have a, you know, a great influence, a great inventiveness. Which, uh, you know, this is one of the few shots they had, Robbie Winters, who must be frustrated, he's not getting a lot of service just now. John Robertson made that point in co-commentary, cool that they're not doing enough to make things happen Aberdeen. Well, you've got to be decisive, you've got to be inventive. They have quality players and they're too, this is really unlucky for me, Sweden, that would have finished the game. 
But you've, you, you've got to get your real creative players to play. Hignett was far too deep for too long. And then when he goes forward, he could have scored a hat-trick. Ian Jess was too quiet for my like, and again, he's too deep. He wants to play passes when he should be in the area, making things happen. The gamble to McSwiggan should have scored for me. I thought he could have cut back inside here. But that summed up his night. He got a good goal, and he could have scored a lot more. As an ex-striker himself, do you, do you think Sturrock has taken aside McSwiggan and taken aside Dodds and said, this is how I want it done? Well, probably not as much so far. He should have hit the target again there. He'll be pleased in the term that they're making chances. It's a case. This was a wonderful opportunity. This is what I'm talking about, being indecisive. Hignett at the start of the season would have made something happen there. He's indecisive and it just, it, it just gradually fades out. And gradually it falls for him. The one thing about Dykstra, he's a good reaction goalkeeper as he showed in three occasions tonight. At least they finished positively, didn't they? They did, and that, that will concern Paul Sturrock slightly. But I think all round they played good passing stuff. Dykstra played well in the end. And it, you know, all round you could see this team growing in stature, although they hung on towards the end, they've got to be pleased. They got a deal here, they got a little bit of lucky, but you need a little bit of luck, the combination of quality and mainly the inventiveness and the positive attitude that Broads, Dodds and Paul Sturrock have now brought to them the United. Paul Sturrock, Charlie, no doubt, a very happy man. Let's hear from him now. He's with Davy Proven. Paul, two, uh, another th three great points, I should say, tonight. But you ended on hanging on a bit towards the end, didn't you? Well, it's been the nature of this team. Uh, we seem to go uh, get into uh, the, the right positions and go goals up and then all of a sudden sit back and we've just got to get it out and make up as quickly as possible. I'm hoping psychologically we've broken the, the problem tonight with hanging on. Uh, but I wouldn't like to go through that every week. Were you encouraged at the way the, the partnership up front is developing? Yeah, I've been very pleased with them. The two of them have worked very hard together in training to get a partnership. It's very difficult when a new player comes in that you can get a gel. Uh, obviously, I've got to go into negotiations with Gary tomorrow morning, but as I said, uh, I'm pleased, obviously, that he's, he's scored a few goals and uh, the two of them have triggered off our, our season. Are you confident you can keep Gary McSwiggan here? Well, it's up to Gary. You know, in the end of the day, uh, Bosman is a situation now that, uh, that is upon everybody. And if we were to worry about things like that, we'd, be, we'd have real problems. Uh, we will talk, obviously, and try to get Gary, uh, Gary to stay. We want him to stay. And you can see the fans want him to stay. Uh, and, and basically, that's all we can really do. That's five without defeat now. You've won your last two. Do you feel you're on the right road now? I think I think it was important, the confidence-wise, that we started to put a run together. It would have been terrible for us to get the foundation last Saturday and, and, and chuck it away tonight. We, we tried hard late on in the game to, to do that, but to be fair, we had a few chances ourselves. And I think it must have been a good game. I delighted with our fans. I thought they were absolutely fantastic. Fantastic players. Work rate was, was different class, and hopefully we can build on this. Well done, Paul. Thank you. Thanks, David. And build, I'm sure he will. Charlie, five games unbeaten. Yeah. Is he really beginning to get it right big time? Well, he got it right St Johnson. This guy's not under scrutiny. He's came back to a club where he was a very, very popular figure. He's been there as a, a reserve team and in, in coaching in a youth capacity. So he's got an influence there. He's got a reputation in the city. But this guy believes in attacking football. He's seen a lot of great passing tonight. All short stuff, all exciting stuff. He's happy with his team. He's happy with the effort. This guy will make them improve. And I think this somebody like Kim they've been waiting on for a couple of years now. OK. United, 1-0 winners over Aberdeen at Tanadice.